We are live! Yay, we're live! Hello everyone, welcome to K9 Academy Online. I am Joel, and this is my second live today because we are recording some videos that will be going up on YouTube. And these are responses to questions uh, that have come from our Facebook ad that we have. Uh, so we have an ad that's running for K9 Academy Online, and, um, and people see it, it gives you uh, two free training lessons, so you can kind of try out our uh, K9 Academy and see how it works for you, and then you can do a uh, two-week, 14-day trial uh, for a dollar. And uh, so a lot of people, they see the ad and they kind of type in questions or comments and things like that. And so I went through, I got a bunch of these questions and, uh, and we're doing a series of these videos in response to those questions. Also, I'm doing this while I'm driving and we're in traffic on I-4. So it looks like we're coming up on the accident, so hopefully it opens up after that. Um, little like situational awareness update there. So the question we're gonna go over today is, how do I deal with a hyper dog? How do I deal with a hyper dog? So uh, it's important, I think, to understand what is the difference uh, between a dog that people would describe as hyper and a dog that people would describe as energetic. So I work with, I breed, and I train Malinois, Belgian Malinois, uh, Dutch Shepherds, and working line German Shepherds. Okay, so all three of these lines of dogs that I breed and train are considered very high energy dogs. Okay, and I do multi-day road trips with my dogs because I don't fly anymore, but when I was flying, I would fly in cab with my dogs uh, where they were just at my feet on the airplane. Um, when we have administrative days and we're just doing a lot of computer work, my dogs just lay in their place in my house. My dogs do not roam the house. Uh, they have a place in the house. They'll come in and they'll just lay in their place. And um, now puppies obviously take more work to, to teach them how to do this, but once they're even uh, partway through their training, uh, they'll lay in their place for hours and hours, right? So we've got a high energy dog that is not being hyper. And so I think it's, it's important to understand the distinction between an energetic dog and a hyper dog. So you can have an energetic dog that is a hyper dog, or you can have an energetic dog that is a well-mannered dog. And the difference, the thing that separates those two things is that the energetic dog that is well-mannered has obedience and discipline. Okay, obedience and discipline. Like, I don't know why we've lost this in our culture, but it used to be that obedience and discipline, um, especially to a, like proper authority, right? Parents, your boss, whatever. When uh, somebody would hire somebody, they would look for somebody who would do their job, who would do what they're told to do at work, right? Go fix this widget or go make this computer program. Go design this road. Got it, boss. I'm going to get it done, right? And um, people who would work hard without being like watched over all the time. Okay? Nowadays, uh, everybody thinks it's, it's bad to discipline children and all this other kind of stuff. And now we have all these, uh, I have a lot of friends who run businesses. Uh, everything from paint shops to uh, guys that manufacture firearms to all kinds of different things. And the problem isn't that there aren't a bunch of people out looking for work. The problem is everybody that's looking for work sucks because they're undisciplined and they whine and complain and moan every time they're told to do a task. That is what hyper dogs are. They're undisciplined, energetic dogs. And they're miserable to be around. A lot of the dogs that end up in the shelters are undisciplined, energetic dogs. Because undisciplined, energetic dogs, they destroy all sorts of things all around them. Right? They chew things up. They jump on the couch and rip it up uh, with their claws. They scratch you. They tear your clothes a lot of times. They crash into everything. If, so if you have anything that's breakable down near where they can be, often it falls off the tables or whatever and gets broken. Undisciplined, energetic dogs are miserable to have in a home. Disciplined, energetic dogs are wonderful to have in the home. And you get disciplined, 
energetic dogs by doing the obedience drills in K9 Academy. When I built K9 Academy, I built it so that people who were purchasing my dogs, my puppies, because we've always sold you know, part of the litters, they don't keep the whole litter, and uh, I wanted to make sure that the people that were buying these puppies were able to have a way to help them train them so they didn't end up in shelters. And so that's what we created K9 Academy for. So it works for more calm dogs. We use it, the same exact techniques on all of our clients that come to our uh, in-person training here in Orlando uh, and at our uh, franchise in uh, the Houston, Texas area. Um, we have all kinds of different dogs that come. The training method works on all kinds of dogs, but it was designed for what people would describe as hyper or energetic dogs, and it works great. You just have to be disciplined and have consistency and then do the techniques that are taught uh, in the academy so that you communicate clearly to the dog what they, what is expected of them, and your dog will be well-mannered, well-behaved, and a pleasure to be around. We take our dogs out in public all the time. We're at restaurants, walking around in stores, uh, out in the city streets. Our dogs never misbehave. Well, not that they never misbehave, but they are well-mannered, good dogs. They don't bark at other dogs. They don't lunge at people. They don't jump up on anyone. They walk at our sides. They wait when we tell them to. They sit when we tell them to. They lay under our tables while we eat. They don't mess with other dogs when they walk by. They're well-mannered dogs, okay? And you get that by following the simple techniques that we teach and then having your own discipline and consistency. Because if you're inconsistent, you will get inconsistent obedience from your dog. Dogs always wanna know where their boundaries are, so they're always gonna be kinda of testing. And if you're consistent in your boundaries, nope, you may not do that. They will stop pushing that boundary once they establish that it's consistent boundary. Right? If you let them get away with things, then they'll go, well, maybe I can get away with it today. Maybe you let them, maybe you don't. And then you get, start to get frustrated because they're always pushing that boundary, but they push it because you're inconsistent in applying your discipline in that spot. Right? So you get, you deal with a hyper dog, so an energetic dog that is undisciplined. Okay, so if we describe it properly, it kind of tells us what to do to fix it, right? So we take our energetic dog without discipline and we make it an energetic dog with discipline, with obedience. That's how you deal with an energetic dog. So I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have an energetic dog and you would like help with it, go to k9academyonline.com and sign up. If you're on Facebook, you can keep your eyes open for our ad. If it pops up for you, uh, you can go and click on that and it will um, it will give you a link. You put in your email address and it emails you a link and that link takes you to a page where you can see two of our lessons for free. It is how to teach your dog sit and how to teach your dog lay down. And you can kind of watch those, get a feel for uh, how the instruction goes in the academy, see if it connects with you, and then you too can start training your energetic dog to be disciplined and not miserable to be around. I uh, hope this, this has been helpful. Remember, K9 is always the letter K, the number nine, just like in this Instagram uh, post right here. And uh, you can check that out, and I would love to hear your feedback on it. You guys, have a great day.